Prototype iPod Nanos are few and far between, being exceedingly rare, even compared to other prototypes. But today, we're going to take a look at two of them. Hello everyone, Apple Demo here, and today, we're going to take a look at two Prototype iPod Nano 5th generations. For some context, the 5th generation of iPod Nano was released on September 13th of 2009, being both the first and last iPod Nano to have a camera. But if that's when the iPod Nano 5th generation was officially released, when were these prototypes made? Upon decoding the serial number on the back, we can see that these prototypes were made on week 31 of 2009, translating to either late July or early August. So essentially, these prototype iPod Nanos were manufactured over one month before the official release. Now after getting the time frame of when these prototypes were manufactured out of the way, let's go into what makes them special and how they're different from production. First, let's take a look at the engravings on the back. Comparing the prototype iPod Nano to a normal iPod Nano, you can see that there's actually an extra line of text above the Designed by Apple California line. This text, being present on both the orange and black prototype iPod Nanos, reads pre-PVT and then some identifying information. For those unaware, PVT means Product Validation Testing, being one of the latest stages in the manufacturing process. But of course, this is pre-PVT, so what does that mean? To say it simply, pre-PVT is when the engineers have finished the DVT stage, which stands for Design Validation Testing, but they're just starting to get into the PVT stage. Now if we flip the iPod over, we can see that, oh my god, what's that? Well, unfortunately I have to mention that both of these iPods have expanded batteries. And for anyone who knows about expanded batteries in iPod Nanos, yeah. But in all fairness, it doesn't take too long to realize why these iPod Nanos do have expanded batteries. Because these iPod Nanos are prototypes, the last time that they were probably charged was before the iPod Nano 5th generation was even released. And with that being over 12 years ago, it's not that hard to see why it happened. But anyways, even though that does majorly suck, let's continue with the video. Now, let's get into the software aspect of these iPods. Because they do have expanded batteries, I won't be able to plug them in for an extremely long time. And as currently being shown on screen, you can see that the orange iPod Nano actually has a shattered display due to the battery expansion, so I won't even be attempting to plug this one in, but it can be assumed that both iPods run the same software. Upon plugging in the black iPod Nano, we can see that the interface looks pretty much the same as any normal 5th generation, but if we navigate to the software version, we can see that it runs an unreleased build of the iPod OS operating system. The build that was shipped on normal iPod Nano 5th generations was iPod OS build 1.0.1. But this iPod Nano runs iPod OS version 1.0. I also attempted to find any information online about the build number, but was unsuccessful. Now, from what I can tell, this is more of a beta build than a development build. I did look around a little bit and I wasn't able to find any developer settings, and I also visually was not able to tell any differences that would be different from 1.0.1. So if I did have to assume, this is probably just an internal beta of the iPod OS operating system. But I personally think this is awesome. Obviously, it's not some fancy thing with a bunch of development features and stuff, but this is still an unreleased version of the iPod OS operating system. And just for a little context, it's very rare to find iPods, aside from the iPod Touch, that aren't running stock iPod OS. Even that Redboard iPod 2nd generation ran stock iPod OS. And with the many years that I have been collecting prototypes and just seeing how many prototypes exist, I've only seen a handful of iPods that run their original OS. Additionally, these iPod Nano 5th generation prototypes are in an unreleased gigabyte capacity, having 32 gigabytes of storage. But production models of the iPod Nano 5th generation only had at max 16 gigabytes, which is more gigabyte capacity than any iPod Nano ever officially had. More than even the 7th generation, with the 7th being released almost 6 years after the 5th. So it almost makes you wonder, 
Was Apple intentionally holding back gigabyte capacities for the iPod Nano to try to incentivize customers to purchase higher end iPods? Honestly, I don't think we'll ever know the answer to that question, but it's just a theory. But with these iPod Nanos having 32GB of storage, it clearly shows that Apple was, at least, considering the idea. But anyways, I hope you enjoyed this video on these iPod Nano prototypes. It is a bit of a shame that these iPods are kinda damaged, but I'm sure with enough precision, they can be fully repaired. And it's just amazing that prototypes like this can still even exist, let alone with the original software and in an unreleased gigabyte capacity. If you did like this video, please consider leaving a like and even subscribe because it really helps motivate me to create more content just like this. And if you want to see more prototype videos like this, go check out my prototype playlist which is currently being shown on screen. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed the video and I'll see you in the next one.